Hello, my name is Tim Galama and welcome to the Spicer Garage. Today we're going to take on a project of a 10-year-old Dodge Dakota pickup truck. The driver has noticed a vibration while driving down the highway and we're suspicious it might be a drive shaft problem. So we're going to take a look at it and see if we can determine exactly what the problem may be. And I'm Paul Moreau, I'm with Dana's Engineering Aftermarket Group, and I'm here to assist Tim with the repair. I'm here to answer any technical questions that he might have. The vehicle's in the garage and up on the lift. We are checking the U-joint to see if that's indeed the problem. You can see by the motion, indeed the U-joint is bad. I've checked it in both directions. One of the trunnions appears to be bad. I'm going to remove the shaft and we're gonna change a U-joint. In this case, I've already taken the fasteners out to make this quicker. Otherwise, they would have Loctite and this procedure may take a while. Last fastener's coming out. Drive shaft is off the flange. I've got the flange off the rear pinion. Now I'm checking to see if there's any problem with the splines at the end of the transmission. The slip is about to come out. There may be an oil leak, so I'm prepared with a cup. Shaft is down and I'll push a cup over to slow the oil leak down. I'm about to check the pinion flange for any end play or movement. I'll check it side to side, up and down to make sure there's no wear. I'll check to make sure there's no more than just the standard run out of ring and pinion. And if any problem does exist, you may need to have it serviced. Here we are at the Dana Technical Center in Maumee, Ohio with my friend Jamie a technician that works here in the drive shaft department. What we're about to do is repair the shaft that we pulled out of the vehicle earlier. He's gonna mark the shaft to ensure that we replace the component correctly to ensure balance. The shaft and components are balanced as an assembly. Next, what we'll do is he will remove the snap rings and we will take a U-joint out using a puller. Snap rings out. Okay, now the puller is about to push the bearing cap through the bottom of the yoke. I got a hold of it. Here we go. It's much easier on the hardware using this tool rather than using a hammer because you run the risk of damaging the yoke if you pound on it. So once it's pushed through, the slip yoke through, the slip yoke can come off. Now that the U-joint has been removed, it's a great time to inspect the drive shaft. One thing you need to look for is to ensure that it is not out of round, or there's no burrs, or there's no nicks, and if there are, it needs to be replaced. You also need to look at the drive shaft tube to make sure all the balance weights are still on and there's no dents in the shaft. Now in this particular case, we are going to use an arbor press to reinstall the U-joint, but you could use a C-clamp or you could use a vise. Now we're at the arbor press and we are gonna push out the remaining U-joint. Just as before, we are gonna mark to make sure that the drive shaft and the flange assembly remain in line for balance. Same procedure, snap rings will be removed and the bearings will be pushed through the yokes. Notice the bearing cap is going into the small cup at the base. It gives it clearance so you can push it all the way through. An arbor press makes short work of an otherwise difficult procedure. Oh. 
Okay, it looks like the final bearing caps are being removed. U-joint is now out. And the bearing cup needs to be pushed through the cap. Same as before, it's a great opportunity to make sure that both of the yoke ears are aligned, there's no burrs or there's no cracks. Same procedure as before. If it is out of line, please replace. Okay, once we got the drive shaft out and the U-joint was removed, we did indeed find one trunnion to be bad. You could notice the rust and pits on the trunnion end. It looks like it was contaminated by water or debris compared to the other ones that seem to be still shiny. We've replaced it with a brand new Spicer Life SPL U-joint. One thing you need to notice is the nice seals that are inside the bearing cap and the other important factor is the amount of grease that's on the trunnion and in the cap is all you will ever need. You will notice that this U-joint has a solid forged journal with no Zerk fittings. This is an indication that it's a Grease for Life U-joint and throughout its useful service life, it does not require any additional grease to be added. One more thing you need to be aware of is the condition of the drive shaft. This isn't the shaft we removed from the vehicle, it's just easier to see. Notice there's a dent in the shaft, that could affect the balance. The other feature is the balance weight. If a balance weight is removed, it could also affect the balance of the shaft. And typically when a balance weight falls off the drive shaft, you will notice a burn mark on the shaft where it was welded. We're about to install the new U-joints into the drive shaft. All right, Jamie's got the bearing cups off. Couple things we need to make sure of, number one, all the needle bearings are on the outside perimeter of the bearing cap. You want to make sure that all the bearings are firmly on the outside. Number two, we have to ensure the thrust washer is at the base of the cap because that's what stops end galling. You notice how he carefully pushed the bearing cap in, puts on a snap ring, and the U-joint will be pushed up to the snap ring. If for some reason the snap ring groove did not align, it would be an indication of a fallen needle bearing. Check to make sure the right depth is maintained. Quick check to ensure that the flange is not too tight. Next step, next side. Transmission slip. Remember the yellow mark that was put on before? So we ensure that the parts are kept in the correct configuration. Notice he's checking to make sure that the thrust washer is in the base of each of those bearing caps and that no needles have fallen over. Now the final portion of the installation is the slip yoke that goes into the transmission. Once the final bearing cups are pushed in and the snap rings are installed, we are going to be ready to install this back into the vehicle and it should be serviceable for another 100,000 miles. So far the process seems to be going on without a hitch and we can get back to the garage for the installation. A final seat with the Arbor Press. Jamie's satisfied, it looks like another project is complete. Included in the Spicer kit, you will find three different sets of snap rings. We recommend starting with the copper colored set, but if they don't fit, there are two other options to ensure that all four snap rings are in the grooves inside the yoke. After you've reinstalled your drive shaft in the vehicle and you've driven the vehicle, if you notice any kind of vibration, you could try a different combination of snap rings. If that doesn't fix the vibration, you may need to take your drive shaft to a driveline shop for a rebalance. We're back at the Spicer garage with the drive shaft all repaired and ready for installation. Before I put the drive shaft in, I'm gonna take a close look to ensure that the seal at the back of the transmission is in decent shape and wasn't torn or ripped when I removed the drive shaft. Second, I'm gonna look back at the differential to make sure that the flange is in decent condition and none of the threads have been pulled. Nope. 
Okay, I'm gonna insert the slip into the back of the transmission. And next, align the holes to connect the flange. Okay, flange is installed. We're ready for the mounting hardware. Dana recommends each and every time you change any driveline component to replace the mounting hardware. That way you can maintain all the proper torque procedures. Now that all the fasteners are to the factory specification, there's only one thing left to do. I need to check that the transmission fluid is at the proper level in case anything leaked during the removal of the drive shaft and it's off on a test ride. The drive shaft has been installed, we've gone on a test ride and everything is working perfectly. Another successful project in the Spicer Garage. Service manuals and additional information about our parts can be downloaded at SpicerParts.com.